watching a billion ideas with me Maria Shakil from the first indigenous warship INS Ajay 1960 to the first indigenous frigate INS Nilgiri 1968 the commissioning of the first indigenously designed and built aircraft INS Vikrant is a significant step in India's pursuit of self-reliance at 45000 tons Vikrant is the largest naval ship to be designed and built in India and with this accomplishment we join an elite military club including the US the United Kingdom France Russia Italy and China Vikrant which means courageous is named after India's first aircraft carrier bought from the UK and commissioned in 1961 the first INS Vikrant was a major symbol of national pride and played an important role in several military operations including the 1971 Indo-Pak war before being decommissioned in 1997 now india's first homemade aircraft carrier will carry the name of a illustrious predecessor with the commissioning of INS Vikrant india will have two operational aircraft carriers the other one being INS Vikramaditya The warship will be a key component of the Indian Navy's push to establish itself as a blue water force. It is especially important amidst India's bid to be a net security provider in the Indian Ocean where it faces China's maritime power and challenges to the freedom of navigation in the Indo-Pacific. Before we decode this milestone, here's a look at how INS Vikrant is truly a game changer a show of new india's naval prowess and an aatmanirbharta milestone like no other reflecting a quantum leap to design build and operate a state of the art aircraft carrier the highlight of an iconic commissioning ceremony at the kochi shipyard beyond the unveiling itself was the majestic fly past of naval choppers and jets Three Chetak helicopters led the fly past above the event, followed by Made in India advanced light helicopters. The Sea King anti-submarine Bravo 42B and the Made in India Dorniers were a big plus. ये स्वदेशी सामर्थ्य, स्वदेशी संसाधन और स्वदेशी कौशल का प्रतीक है। भारत के पास प्रतिभा थी, अनुभव था। लेकिन हमारे लोग इस कुटिलता के लिए मानसिक रूप से तैयार नहीं थे हम कमजोर पड़े और उसके बाद गुलामी के कालखंड में अपनी ताकत को धीरे धीरे भुला बैठे अब आजादी के अमृतकाल में भारत अपनी उस खोई हुई शक्ति को वापस ला रहा है आज भारत ने गुलामी के एक निशान गुलामी के एक बोझ को अपने सीने से उतार दिया है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वाइज द 45000 टन कैरियर इज अ टेक एंड मैन पावर मार्वल एंड अ मिनी सिटी इन इटसेल्फ 14 lifts that transfer aircraft and ammunition personnel and provisions, 8 dining halls for officials, 11 kilometers of passages and lobbies, 2400 spaces, 2200 compartments with cabins for women officers and agnivis and some 2500 kilometer long cabling. With a 76% Indian component, INS Vikrant is a celebration of India's aatmanirbharta edge. Iske air base mein jo steel lagi hai वो स्टील भी स्वदेशी है ये स्टील डीआरडीओ के वैज्ञानिकों ने विकसित किया भारत की कंपनियों ने प्रोड्यूस किया एक युद्धपोत से भी ज्यादा एक तैरता हुआ एयरफील्ड है एक तैरता हुआ शहर है इसमें जितनी बिजली पैदा होती है उससे पांच हजार घरों को रोशन किया जा सकता है 
इसका फ्लाइट डेक भी दो फुटबॉल ग्राउंड के बराबर है विक्रांत में जितने केबल्स और वायर्स इस्तेमाल हुए हैं वो कोची से शुरू हो तो काशी तक पहुंच सकते हैं कीपिंग विद द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इनिशिएटिव द उजाला इनिशिएटिव वी हैव एलईडी लाइट्स इंस्टॉल थ्रू आउट द शिप नाउ विद दीज एलईडी लाइट्स नॉट ओनली इट इंक्रीज द इल्यूमिनोसिटी इट इट हैज हायर रिलायबिलिटी and it reduces the overall uh, life cycle maintenance cost of the ship as well we don't mind having you know lighting up the operational requirements uh, for for the operational requirements however if you talk about the cabins where we live in we definitely when we move out we never forget to switch off the lights we control and monitor the propulsion power generation auxiliaries everything that is under that is in the ship we control it and monitor from this place this is the pinnacle of automation in marine engineering and marine technology on board an indian naval ship the hangar of ins vikrant can accommodate up to 20 aircraft of various configurations at any given time they can be serviced there and also be parked if ins vikrant is at sea but why is an aircraft carrier and aircraft on board flying them such a difficult task because you're not looking at a static airfield this place where i'm standing when ins vikrant is at sea will constantly move forward and backward right and left and god forbid if there are choppy weather then there will be that cock screw movement as well making it even more challenging INS Vikrant will eventually be capable of an air wing consisting of 30 aircraft comprising MiG-29 fighter jets can move 31 MH60R multi-role helicopters in addition to indigenously manufactured advanced light helicopters and light combat aircraft with a travel range of 7500 nautical miles and an AK630 close in weapon system the carrier catapults india to among the world's leading naval forces isn't this clearly a military game changer let's decode this with vice admiral shekhar sinha joining us captain dk sharma and vice admiral randhawa i really appreciate your time i'm going to begin with you vice admiral sinha many say india has arrived India has now acquired indigenous capability and capacity to build aircraft carriers diesel and nuclear powered submarines and light combat aircraft how significant a milestone is this commissioning of INS Vikrant Arya uh, firstly thank you for getting me on your program i think it's the i would say that the in the history of ship building uh, the warship building Uh, this is the greatest milestone that i can think of uh, it is a technological marvel the latest technologies have been uh, sort of used in this that is number one which i think uh, admiral randhawa will be speaking more on it but let me tell you the aircraft carrier is a machine is a platform around which the india's maritime strategy is built india has always envisaged uh, two carrier operational carrier task groups or carrier battle groups as they are called and we have had only one at a time uh, at any given point in time except for a short time when vikrant and virat were both available so now we are back to having two carriers again and navy's dream of having two carrier battle groups for the two seas the arabian sea and the bay of bengal for eastern and western seaboard will be now uh, fructified it's a very important day both for the fleets the indian navy and for the country uh, which is required to protect its sea lanes of communication which are very long starting from uh, uh, maybe if, you know from the horn of africa right up to malacca strait and on the other side right up to the gulf of aden so to the gulf um, the Mal the straits of hormuz so i think that uh, in such a huge task and the geopolitical situation is altering every day yes. and we do not know how it is going to turn out 5 years from now so i think maria it's a very important milestone for the country and for the navy yes and take that thought forward admiral randhawa at about three times the original uh, it isn't just the biggest warship designed and built in india it is also fully a swadeshi design the emphasis that right from the steel till the final shape it's pure swadeshi design how significant is it to have that make in india idea and atmanirbhar idea that it is about self reliance it's certainly a very creditable achievement 
of our uh, designers, our naval designers, from corvettes, frigates and destroyers, they have taken a gigantic leap and uh, designed a large aircraft carrier, the likes of which has never been designed in this country ever and neither built in this country. So overall, it has been a team effort of our designers, our naval staff, our professional directorates, the Cochin shipyard, and the indigenous manufacturers who stepped forward to take up the challenge and produce this uh, marvelous ship, which has given India a place in the navies of the world that can build and operate their own aircraft carriers. And Captain Sharma, uh, the Cabinet Committee on Security cleared this project for construction in 2002. We can ask why it took India with its engineering base 23 years to commission this ship. Oh, good evening, Maria, and uh, good evening to, uh, to you, both my seniors and all your viewers. As uh, sirs, both the admirals have already brought out, yes, you're right, it has taken us a uh, good about two decades, but Maria, see the points in between them. There were uh, major milestones achieved. First, we made our own steel. We did not import any steel. Before this, whatever warship uh, grade steel was being, you know, uh, used for manufacturing of ships was imported, whether it was coming from Russia or wherever it was getting sourced from. But this was a, a landmark where we said no to imported steel. And hence came the role of DLRL, DRDO, Indian Navy, and many other uh, like the Steel Authority of India, which took up the challenge. And it took us quite a, a, a quite some time to get our own steel. That is why the cutting of steel, which happened in 2005, and we were uh, able to lay the keel of the ship in 2009. Yeah. And thereafter, the ship was, you know, started, the construction started, and it took us four years to launch the ship in water in 2013. So you see the timelines, how I'm saying. Uh, first, you get the CCS approval, then you take a decision, a conscious decision that we are going to go Atmanirbhar, which means that we will make our own steel. That is, uh, okay, for the benefit of the viewers, I will just break it down to three components in warship building. That is, when a ship is made ready, hmm. we have three components. One is to float, to move, and to fight. So the first part is to float. How do you make the ship? So all this sourcing of steel and other infrastructure or uh, uh, material which has been used, nothing has been imported. 90% of the things which have been used in uh, what you see INS Vikran today are indigenous. Okay. So that is a huge, huge achievement for us. Yes. And then we come to power hmm. generation and to move. Hmm. What all is required to move Vikran? So as of... Uh, I mean, say, uh, whatever the news reports are coming and whatever the press releases have come out, hmm. almost 50 to 60% of the machinery is indigenous. Again, a huge uh, feather in our cap that we have been able to uh, get this machinery or the parts or the equipment sourced from India, have confidence in our own industry, entrepreneurs. And as you are aware that uh, almost 500 MSMEs hmm. have uh, contributed, starting from the majors, the giants of LNP, BHEL, BEL, DRDO, various other labs, various, you know, clusters of theirs. Okay. Coming down to the industry, coming down to the smallest, the micro entrepreneur who was there, who has chipped in. Hmm. So it became a, a whole of nation effort and it was a cautious decision that we are not going to buy it. Having said that, this is how... Uh, you can, you know, cater for uh, 23 years and also last two, three years have been very, very tough on every every one of us. Yes. It was all COVID pandemic. We had to, you know, have so many, so many more protocols added to it that if you have to work, you have to maintain a safe distance, how to get into the ship, how to get out of the ship. And you know what, uh, what all can go wrong in this situation. But okay. yes, that's, hats off to uh, Cochin Shipyard, hats, uh, hats off to the Warship Design Bureau, DGND of the Navy. Okay. The crew of the ship yes. who have, you know, put uh, everything together and made it a reality on okay. 2nd September when the ship was dedicated to the nation and commissioned by the Honorable Prime Minister. Let me bring in Admiral uh, Shekhar Sinha here. Do you think this will uh, put an end to the usual military bureaucratic red tape? Let me give you an example. The present status 
of HAL building capacities for Tejas as well as upgradation work for existing Mirage 2000 fighter fleet uh, be best left unsaid. The same can be said for the Indian public sector shipyards as well. Uh, you know, they are routine, you know, they are routinely, I would say, hit by delays and cost overruns. Do you think this becomes crucial, particularly at a time when we are looking at changed uh, ground realities in terms of diplomatic positioning and also strategic positioning vis-a-vis -vis India, China, Russia, Pakistan? Um, Maria, it's a very important point that you have made. You know, as far as the warship building is concerned, there may have been delay, may have been delays for reasons other than what is our ability to build. Uh, you know, the, the point is uh, that India has been manufacturing, building its warships from late 60s. And we have been, by and large, almost all ships are built in India, except for very few, and they are only exceptions. So I would say that as far as warship building is concerned, uh, except that you've quoted it has taken 23 years, and Captain Sharma has rightly given you the timeline. I don't think that shipbuilding has been uh, such a stagger. But coming to HAL's question, uh, Maria, uh, unfortunately, the aerospace industry in our country uh, didn't develop as much as the uh, shipbuilding, warship building. Hmm. And it has always been a tough task for the HAL to produce the aircraft uh, which are required by our, our Air Force. And therefore, the Air Force was intensive in uh, flying the foreign built aircraft, and it was being manufactured under license, uh, that too, almost 90% of the items used to come from uh, mainly the Russians. So for HL, it is going to be a big challenge. And I see that from the time this government has come into uh, power, uh, Prime Minister Modi's government, they have really given it a big push. The Ministry of Defense has given a big push. The defense PSU, uh, HL is one of them. And these PSUs have been, uh, sort of their leash has been tightened. And they have been given timelines and seen that they comply with it. The second important aspect, Maria, is that now the government has permitted the, yes. uh, the, uh, the industry to export their weapon systems and platform. And that has given new sort of impetus to the people who are working in the field. You know that we have already sold Brahmos missile to Philippines and some more countries are in the pipeline. And so there are another customers for our surface to air missiles, which we are building in collaboration with uh, Israel. So I would say uh, that all these uh, changes in the, uh, the laws, the changes in the time frame, and India's own economic stature having gone up, uh, also what the Chinese are doing in and around us, on the border, it yeah. has really given a fair amount of uh, push and sh shall I say, uh, good josh as they call it in, in Hindi, a very good josh for everybody to put in their best and get all these things on absolutely on track. Yes, Maria. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Admiral Randava, that particular thought, you know, with Russia virtually joining hands with China, particularly post the Ukraine invasion, we have also seen how, and, and also that's a fact that Russian hardware supply to India could be a matter of concern, hardware supply to India could be a matter of concern going ahead. And uh, they tend to supply more to China and Pakistan. Do you think in that reality, uh, self-reliance is a necessity, not really an option or a choice here? I, I think the Navy had uh, taken a step towards self-reliance way back in the 60s when they went in for building indigenous frigates. Although under license, they were built in Indian shipyards by Indian workmen and uh, they were very successful and they laid the basis for a modern Navy in India. Uh, looking at uh, the importance of indigenously developing designs and constructing warships, uh, it is a, it's a, no questions can be asked about that. It is an imperative. Uh, at the same time, the financial support or the okay. fiscal support for Navy okay. needs to be uh, looked at afresh because naval assets are cost intensive. They are complex, they are expensive. And uh, a word about the public sector shipyards, they also went up the learning curve. And the biggest uh, 
benefit that came out of the public sector shipyards. Firstly, the Navy received indigenously built ships. The second, foreign suppliers of ships had to be, could not take Indian Navy or the government of India for a ride. When it came to the occasional imports, the prices had to be kept in check. Otherwise, they knew that uh, we would go for an indigenous option, even if it was not of uh, the uh, specification that we sought from abroad, or it would take a little longer, but we had an option. And I think the uh, performance of our public sector shipyards drove home that uh, truth to all suppliers that India can and will go the indigenous route. Uh, imports are only a stopgap arrangement when required. Okay. Then, uh, Captain now, Sharma. Yes, with, please go ahead. Complete your point, sir. I would just like to make one point that you said about China. Yes. Now, China has published uh, white papers on the modernization of the Navy. Hmm. And uh, uh, they have uh, looked not only at the near seas, but they are intending to have a presence in the far oceanic regions, to quote the words from the white paper, the translated words. Now, China is a very large uh, trading uh, country. And the majority of its petroleum exports tra traverse the Indian Ocean. And they are very conscious of this fact that their petroleum imports have to be kept safe. Okay. India sits astride the Indian Ocean and uh, it controls the choke points. It is in a position to exercise control over the choke points, Gulf of Hormuz, Gulf of Aden, hmm. and from Africa right up to Malacca. And Malacca is a place where we are very well placed to exercise control because it's next door to our Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So, build-up of, uh, of the Navy, especially looking at China's attempts in the region okay. to build the one belt, one road, foreign investments, large number of for, uh, Chinese personnel stationed abroad, it is imperative that we realize that China is looking to have a permanent presence in, in, the, in, in our uh, in in the the Indian, Indian Ocean, Ocean as well. Yes. And we, yes, in the Indian Ocean, and uh, especially with uh, what they call a logistic facility coming into use in uh, Djibouti and uh, visits to Sri Lanka. Yes. Especially by submarines. Yes, that's right. Staging, I have just enough time of nuclear submarines for Captain in our ocean. Sharma now. Captain yeah. Sharma, the Indian military must promote Indian private defense sector by purchasing indigenous equipment rather than uh, looking at foreign acquisition. Do you think that should be also key here while we really lord and celebrate INS Vikrant? Maria, I must tell you that Indian Navy, for sure, what I am saying, I am, I, I, I am fully responsible for that. From the turn of the century, we have produced world-class ships, whether it is the Delhi class, whether it is the Shivaliks, whether it is Kolkata class, or the one we are, which we are now producing, Vishakhapatnam class. And you can see the technological marvel which INS Vikrant is. The PSUs, uh, the PSU yards also the yard under the Ministry of Shipping, that is the Cochin Shipyard, have uh, taken up the challenge in a very, very positive way. And today, our ships are, if not better, as compared, or, you know, if not better than the Alre Burke class of the US, our ships are matching them point to point in capability, in, you know, sea keeping, you name it. So, uh, and also, we are also, in the last uh, one year, I can tell you hmm. that there has been an industry in Nagpur who has been able to make the explosives for the guns which used to be imported from uh, Russia, hmm. the AK-630 guns. So this is a big, big uh, change which is happening. And we have confidence in our industry. And I'm telling you, the way we have you know, taken strides in making drones, it is only a matter of time that India will be exporting this. Mark All my right. words. Okay. Today's report of SIPRI also says that India stands at, you know, 23rd number on the list of net exporters. 
of defense equipment. All right. I'm sure this is going to jump up and jump up very rapidly because the ecosystem which is being created mm -hmm. in our country. Yes. The defense PSUs, the DRDOs. Yes. The industry, the private industry, you name it, the Bharat Forge, the LNTs, the Mahindras, the Tatas, everybody is chipping in and the results are seen now. Slowly, okay. slowly, you will find that as the MOD keeps on increasing the negative list of imports, that means a few things will not be imported, Okay. period. So All right. where is the alternative? The alternative is already you know, coming up. You come to the DEF Expos, you come to the various exhibitions and you see it's it's a it's a mind boggling uh, kind of a transformation which is happening, and I'm saying I'm not saying that this has happened overnight. It is a result of last uh, you know a decade plus where the confidence on the industry was right. you know, the, uh, the the government of India the MOD okay held their hands and you know promoted them. Yes, now we have to give them orders. So that they can all right survive and thrive. Captain Sharma, I've really but, uh, come to the end of this discussion. My producer is constantly telling me to end this discussion. Thank you so much, but Admiral uh, Randhawa and Admiral Shekhar Sinha. Thank you so much for your time as well. Uh, that's all from me. I'll be seeing you next week with another edition of A Billion Ideas. Thanks so much for watching.